Hey there viewers, welcome back to another episode of Triangle Diagnostics. Vehicle we're going to be working on today, 2014 Ford Fusion. It has a 2.5 liter engine and the complaint we're going to be addressing is no AC. All I've really done with the car up to this point is I've uh, pulled it into the shop and I have confirmed that the AC indeed doesn't work. It blows extremely hot out of the vents. So um, as far as going forward, first steps, let's get inside the car. Let's uh, actually do a vent temperature measurement just to give you some perspective on what we're dealing with. And then we'll kind of pick a diagnostic direction based off of that and uh, you know, see what we find on this car. So we're inside this car now. We're just gonna go ahead and start it up. Look at all the pretty lights on this thing. 2014, baby. So I've already got the AC on. Taking a look at this, you know, one thing that I'm kind of thinking about is that this is a manual AC system. It's not automatic. You know, all of our controls here, they're all manual. So uh, that's going to be one thing to keep in mind kind of going forward on this. And it's definitely one thing that I'm thinking about. So uh, I've got it on. Uh, I've got it on max AC. I've got the recirc on. I'm just kind of keeping this blower speed at a medium level mainly so it's uh, not making a bunch of noise. Let me enable. There we go. Enable max AC. Turn this blower back down. So it doesn't kill my microphone. But as far as this vent temp measurement goes, all I've got here is a uh, Type K thermocouple. It's going into the middle vent right there. I just got that going down to my multimeter. And if uh, we take a look at that current measurement, we can see 99 degrees. This AC isn't doing anything. Uh, you know, the engine on this thing is cold, but I mean, really, these vent temps are extremely hot. Um, this doesn't react to RPM differences either. You know, if I were to sit here and rev it up, this doesn't change. So, you know, definitely verified the complaint. So as far as what I want to do next, you know, really just to keep this sort of easy, is um, I wanna to go to the scan tool, this being a late model vehicle. And uh, really the reason I wanna do that is because I'm sure there's gonna be a lot of data available to us. You know, I'm sure we can look at AC pressures and uh, AC clutch command statuses and you know, all sorts of good relevant info that's gonna help us troubleshoot this AC system. Um, if this were an older vehicle, I may go straight to the gauges, but I'm just not going to do that on this one. It being so new, I think that we're going to have a lot of info available on the scan tool to help us diagnose this thing. So let's get the scan tool hooked up and uh, let's see what we can find in there. All right, so there's our vehicle, 2014 Ford Fusion. It's going to hit OK. Uh, to start off, let's do a code scan. Let's make sure we don't have any crazy um, AC related fault codes in memory. You know, because that could definitely give us uh, direction one way or the other on what sort of issue we're dealing with. You know, ideally when, we, when we're dealing with AC problems, you know, we don't want to see any fault codes. Um, and if we don't see any, really what that's going to point to is potentially an undercharged condition, maybe a compressor issue or something like that. But uh, if we have any fault codes in here, we're definitely going to want to worry about those and, uh, you know, take a little bit, take a little bit deeper of a look Not exactly sure how long it's going to take. This is a newer vehicle, so uh, you know this code scan could take a little bit. Hopefully not. Got to be patient here. Hard for me sometimes. I'm not a very patient person. I'll admit, I get in a rush, and I just kind of want to go, go, go. It's kind of it's kind of difficult for me to sit here and watch this slow code scan process take place, but you know, what are you gonna do? There we go, looks like we're all wrapped up here. Um, as far as detected systems go, we only have, looks like five displaying here. Something I've learned in the past is not to put a whole lot of faith in that. Um, very often you'll have some of these modules that just don't show up on the automatic code scan for some reason, so. What I kind of want to do is I want to scroll through here and see if I have any sort of uh, AC type module. So I'm just moving through here, taking a look. And remember, this is you know manual AC, so it's very likely it may not have may not have anything like that. You know, I'm certainly not seeing anything. So that's okay. Um, going forward, let's just go into our engine menu because, you know, regardless, we're going to have some AC data available here. We can definitely get some direction off of that. 
So just taking a look at these uh, data menu lists, we're gonna want to go to this one, relay switches, charging AC. Let's see what sort of goodies we can find in here, huh? So we got a lot of good stuff here. Um, I'm just gonna customize this. I'm just gonna pick ones that are related to this AC system. So we got a lot of stuff up there. Just gonna skim it down, see if I see anything else that's uh, related to this, to this AC system here. All right, so here's what we got. So it looks like our air conditioning clutch output is okay. Not sure what this PID means. Some sort of uh, some sort of fault detection monitor. Not 100% on you know the specifics on that. Um, good piece of info there. Air conditioning compressor command is on. Uh, take a look at this air conditioning pressure. It's only got this value of five psi. That's a little concerning, for sure. Man, what's up with that? Uh, keep going down here. Air conditioning pressure sensor, 0 0.45 volts. So that's probably gonna be a five volt pressure sensor. You know, it's pretty much pegged at the uh, bottom of its range. Take a look at this air conditioning request signal. We can see that that says yes. So we know that the, uh, we know that the command is there for this AC to be turned on. And judging off this air conditioning compressor command data PID, uh, this engine computer is attempting to uh, cut this compressor on. But really what I don't like about this is uh, taking a look at this air conditioning pressure PSI value that's indicated 5.8 pounds now i'm not sure if this is a high side measurement or a low side measurement pertaining to this ac system uh, typically the low side is going to have just a regular switch on most systems and the high side is going to be one with the uh, actual pressure sensor so sort of based off this reading sort of based off this measurement you know six psi that's nothing you know really we're not going to have any sort of ac action you know based off of a charge like that um, sort of thinking out loud one thing i'm sort of curious about is why is our compressor command on if this pressure is in fact so low so that's a little weird i'm not sure if there's a software issue going on um, you know I'm, I'm not too certain on that but sort of based on this low ac pressure uh, value we have here under this data parameter kind of what i want to do next step i want to get the hood popped and I want to put some gauges on this thing just to take a look at what sort of static pressure we have. And I think that may give us a little bit better direction as far as what's going on here. You know, just sort of looking at this, you know, to me, this, this screams that this system is undercharged. So I don't know. Let's get some gauges on here and take a look. All right, guys, so all I did was I just uh, popped the hood and I got old Bessie rolled up so we could uh, get her hooked up and look at her gauges. So a uh, low side connection is here, high side is here. Kind of taking a look at the engine compartment for perspective there. And if we uh, come over here to the gauges and take a look, kind of our readings on the scan tool we got as far as these pressures, you know, that was definitely accurate. Vehicle's not running, these are just static pressures. Taking a look at the high side, you know, we're just barely above zero, right around 20 PSI. Taking a look at the low side, right there around 20, 25 PSI. So um, generally speaking, and this is definitely not the best way to uh, sort of determine how much refrigerant is in a system, but it is a number that I tend to go by. Um, when I'm taking a static pressure measurement on an AC system, really what I like to see is I like to see pressures that are somewhat near ambient temperature. Um, as far as current temperature here in the shop, it's about 75 degrees. So ideally on a full system, I would want to see around that pressure wise. Again, that's not, a, that's not a science, that's not exact, but that's more just a ballpark figure of sort of what I like to look for. So, you know, taking a look at these pressures, you know, we can clearly see we got a problem here. This thing is definitely undercharged. So there's a few things we can do. Um, we can start doing a visual inspection for leaks, one. Um, another thing we can do is we can recharge it, get the correct charge amount in here, and then reevaluate the AC system after that. Um, if I weren't filming, what I would probably do is that. I would uh, do a, actually, you know what? What we'll do is let's do a quick visual inspection for leaks first. And uh, the way I'm gonna do this, I'm just gonna use a dye light. 
and uh, we're going to be super quick about it, and I'm going to get this thing recharged, um, and then we'll kind of reevaluate this AC system after that. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a quick visual inspection for leaks on this AC, um, on this AC system. And uh, the way I like to do that is I like to use an infrared flashlight like this, just a pair of these glasses. I mean, it really makes dye show up real, real easy. So all I'm going to do is I'm just wearing these glasses. I'm going to turn this light on. You can see it's kind of a black light. Whoa, that looks weird in the camera. Whoa. Well, that's kind of a cool science experiment. But uh, anyways, so I'm just sort of following all of these AC hoses around. And you can see I still have the AC machine plugged up here. So that's one thing we need to, uh, we need to think about. But I'm just kind of looking through all of these hoses, trying to look at the connections into the condenser. And just seeing if I have any, uh, have any evidence of dye spitting out anywhere. And I have a little bit right here on this uh, on this hose, but being how discharged this system is, I don't really think that's uh, I don't really think that's what I'm looking for. I'm really looking for just a big, big exploded area. And one thing that I've noticed when using something like this too, and if you own one of these lights in these glasses, you'll probably know this from experience. Okay, I'm, I'm looking at the, uh, what I believe is the high side pressure sensor, and there's definitely some, uh, definitely some dye deposits on there too. But uh, one, thing you'll, one thing you'll know, you'll notice about this, is when you shine stuff like certain plastics and certain dead bugs, <laughs> they shine up real bright using these, uh, using these glasses. But uh, so I saw a few different locations on the vehicle that had the evidence of dye being present so we definitely need to address those leaks. Um, let me actually get you focused in to some of the places that I saw that. I wonder if I can show you through the camera what that looks like maybe. That would be cool, huh? So um, some of the places I was looking, if we can see if we can look down through here. I don't know if you can see way down through that hole Maybe if I can not use the light. Way down through that hole right there. If you can sort of see that thing where I'm shining right there. I believe that's the, uh, I believe that's the AC pressure sensor. I definitely saw some dye around that location. Kind of moving into the engine compartment. This uh, fitting right here that I'm tapping with my light. I saw some dye around there. Let me see if I can prop you up on the tripod and give you guys a look at that, because I think that would be pretty cool. So I've just got you guys kind of angling down there to that flange I was telling you about. You can see I'm sort of shining it with this light and obviously that kind of screws up the camera. I'm gonna see if I can hold this lens. <laughs> Man, this is, I don't know how the well is gonna work. I'm gonna see if I can hold this lens in front of the camera and shine that just to see just to see what happens. I have no idea if it's going to uh, show up right or not. I'm not some mad scientist. But uh, me looking through these glasses, I can definitely see it. I have no idea. I have no idea if it can on the camera or not. But uh, definitely have some leaks uh, without a doubt on this system. So those leaks need to be addressed. But sort of what I want to do as far as kind of moving forward just to see See what we're working with here is I'm going to do a quick service on this system, uh, get the pressures back up to where they need to be. I don't, I'm not suspicious of any catastrophic leaks, so I'm not really worried about uh, pollution or anything like that. We're really not going to be venting that much out. We're not going to be losing that much anyways, and we're going to be sucking it right back out anyways to fix these leaks. So let me get this thing charged back up and uh, we'll see if the AC works. All right, so I got it all charged up. You can see our pressures are definitely looking a little bit better. Uh, this thing takes 1.5 pounds of refrigerant. That's what I put in it. Taking a look at our low side, about 88 pounds. About the same thing on the high side. Not the same sort of accuracy on this uh, high side gauge. So I've got the vehicle running and the AC is on. So uh, immediately we're seeing an issue here and that's that we don't have any differential of pressure. And really what that tells me is that this compressor is not pumping. 
So at this point, sort of what I want to do is I want to do a quick visual on the compressor itself. And it's down here, sort of there where I'm shining. And uh, this thing doesn't really have a easily viewable clutch, I'm noticing. So it appears that this is sort of a strange design clutch, one that you can't really, can't really tell if it's engaged or not. So sort of at this point, you know, given what I'm seeing, I want to go back to the scan tool. So that's what we're going to do. So it's jetting back over here to the scan tool. You see we lost comms while we were doing that service. There we go. So I just want to uh, I just want to re take another look at that AC data we had before. Now that we got good pressures back in here, uh, remember before taking a look at this AC compressor uh, clutch command status, it was on even though you know we had really hardly any pressure in the system. I definitely thought that was odd. Taking another look at our air conditioning pressure voltage, you know now we're around 1.2, 1.23, where before we were around 0.45. And uh, the pressure we were seeing as far as this uh, pressure translated number, uh, that was stating around 5 PSI. So we definitely fixed the undercharge condition, but uh, what we did not fix is the fact that this compressor is not pumping right now. And uh, what we can see here, looking at this air conditioning compressor command status, this, you know, this AC command data PID, it appears that the engine computer is attempting to put this thing, uh, turn this thing on. We have this air conditioning clutch output uh, data pit here. It says okay, I'm not sure what that means. I don't know if the engine computer is doing any sort of a direct monitoring of this AC compressor clutch circuit or anything like that. I'm also not exactly sure how it's controlled. So you know, all of that being said, I definitely want to take a look at the diagram. I want to get a diagram printed up for this thing. See how this AC compressor is controlled and uh, really just start doing some basic circuit checks to uh, determine why it's not pumping, why we don't have uh, building high side pressure and we're not building suction into the low side. So let's go to the diagram and you know, see how this system looks. So taking a look at this diagram, a uh, very, very simple circuit we're dealing with here. We look right here, this is the AC compressor. Um, it has actually two wires going to it. Oftentimes on some of these compressors, you'll just have one and that's, that's really just the, uh, the positive feed to the clutch. Uh, on this one, it has two. So this clutch has a separate external ground somewhere. So that's one thing that I need to uh, keep in mind. Um, as far as the power feed goes, as far as the control, what's actually gonna energize this clutch. It comes from the AC clutch relay here. Uh, it has a fuse right after the relay. It looks like fuse number 22. As far as the uh, relay itself goes, it is uh, ground side switched. The load side and the control side are both going to receive power. And uh, the control side is going to be hot and start or run. And the uh, load side is going to be hot at all times. Taking a brief look at the control side, comes down here on what looks like a white with brown wire and that goes straight down to the engine computer. Uh, they're calling that ACCR. Uh, I guess that means AC clutch or maybe air conditioning compressor clutch, air clutch, I don't know. I don't know what it means. But that's ground side control of the uh, AC clutch relay. So kind of what I want to do, and I think the easiest thing to do uh, to sort of break the circuit down, being that this fuse 22 is after the relay, we can take our test light, go to here, do a real quick voltage measurement. That's gonna tell us everything we need to know about this relay as well as the controls of it. You know, if we have power there, we definitely don't need to be looking at the, uh, at the relay or back to the engine computer. We definitely need to start focusing directly at the compressor. So uh, that's what we're gonna do. So let me, get this, uh, let me get this fuse located. It looks like it's in the battery junction box. That should be under the hood. And uh, we'll take a quick measurement here and see what we have. All right, so just taking a look, we're all nice and zoomed in here to the, uh, to the battery junction block. And uh, remember, the fuse that we're worried about is uh, fuse number 22. So I'm just taking a look at this. Just taking a look at this uh, here. And it's kind of laid out in this orientation. So right here, we have fuse 22. 
So that's gonna be right here in this location. Let me point at that with my test light right there. So what I'm gonna do <clears throat> is I'm gonna take a measurement there. So I'm just hooking my test light up to a known good ground. I'm just touching the battery over here, making sure it lights. Definitely does, so good to go. So what I'm hoping to do with this is I'm hoping to prove out the control of this relay. I'm hoping to prove out the engine computer, but uh, I've got the car off, the car is not running. And uh, I'm doing that simply for noise to keep the noise down. So what I'm going to need to do to check this uh, compressor clutch circuit is I'm going to need to uh, turn this relay on and I'm just gonna use a scan tool to do that. So I'm just getting the scan tool up here. And we're still in that data menu we were in before. So I'm just exiting out of this. And uh, what, I'm, what I'm gonna focus on is this functional test menu here. And I'm gonna go to the output controls. And uh, what I'm looking for is I'm looking for the uh, AC compressor clutch. What I have here is this air conditioning compressor cycling switch. I'm not sure what that is. We're gonna try it and see what this, see what this does. I'm hoping this is this uh, AC compressor clutch relay. So I'm just gonna turn this test on. I definitely heard a click. So just keeping that on and I'm gonna go back to that fuse and uh, drop this fuse lid all over the place. So I'm going back to this fuse and really what I want to see is I wanna see power here. As we can see, my test light does light. Go to the other side of that, lights on that side too. So the fuse isn't blown. I'm gonna turn this, uh, turn this test off while we watch this test light. So that's off, that's on, that's off, that's on. So based on this test, there's absolutely nothing wrong with this, uh, nothing wrong with this relay, nothing wrong with this fuse. So really kind of based off of that at this point, what we need to do is we need to go down to the compressor itself and do some measurements there. So as far as this testing, you know, testing this compressor, this thing is pretty tucked away and I don't have a lot of access to it. I'm gonna see if I can zoom in on the, uh, on the electrical connector for it. Let me see. Hmm. There it is, okay. It's just zooming in right there. Kinda looking right past this alternator. Let's see if I can shine it right there. So that's the actual electrical connector for this, uh, for this magnetic clutch on this AC compressor. So that's what we need to get hooked into. I'm just sort of thinking about my options and how I want to do that. I think I may be able to get my hand down there and get some, uh, get some probes installed. So let me see if I can work that out real quick. So given how difficult this connector was to get to, you know, I tried getting down there, I tried getting a T-pin in it, and I just, I just couldn't do it, guys. So what I did was I just unplugged the connector off the back of the uh, AC compressor. I just put this Noid light in there. Um, pretty decent load using this Noid light. It's got about a 1.3 amp bulb in it. But uh, all I'm going to do to test this, you know, this is a two-wire compressor clutch. It's got its own ground all the time, and then obviously control comes from the relay. I'm just gonna keep that light in there. And I'm gonna go back to this functional test. And I'm just gonna turn this on. I heard the relay click, and as we can see, our bulb is lighting. So I'm gonna click this back off. That's off. That's on. That's off. That's on. So, you know, based on what we have on this vehicle, we have good power, we have good ground going to this AC compressor clutch, and it is not building any pressure. It is not providing any suction, uh, suction on the low side. So really what that tells us is we have a bad, bad AC compressor. Um, as far as our sort of initial observations of this thing being low on charge, you know, obviously that needs to be addressed. We found a few different leaks. Um, I do need to check this thing out a little bit harder. Uh, I need to check the evaporator drain and some other places to see if we have leaks in those locations. So definitely still have to worry about that. So definitely a little weird that we had sort of two separate issues on this thing. You know, one, the vehicle came in undercharged, you know, for sure. 
um, just to give you a number, I pulled out 0 0.3 pounds of refrigerant and uh, the vehicle takes 1.5 pounds. So hopefully that'll emphasize exactly how low this vehicle was. But uh, even after getting this thing vacked out, putting a, putting a charge back in it, we still had no AC, uh, still had no compressor action. So we did a few quick voltage measurements and you know, the compressor clutch is bad. So that's definitely somewhat, definitely somewhat strange to have two issues like that. But uh, you know, just revisit that test. You know, you can see our bulb is lit. Turn this back off, she goes out. So the controls are there, the pressure is not. This thing needs a compressor. That's all there is to it. So I know the AC compressor clutch is bad on this, guys. And um, the reason that I know that is because performing that functional test where we're energizing this relay, I don't hear anything happening with the compressor. Uh, the thing about that is, is you being in the video, you can't hear that. So I, I feel that there's one more test that I need to do to uh, sort, of, sort of prove it to you in a way. And uh, the test that I'm going to do is kind of thinking back to how we were testing this relay and testing control of it. We were using the scan tool to uh, energize this relay ourselves. And what that sort of bypasses are inputs to this, uh, to this engine computer regarding the output here for this AC clutch. So really, to be you know to be 100%, I already know it's the clutch just because I can I can hear that that clutch isn't moving whatsoever. But more to prove it to you, what we need to do is we need to start the vehicle up, and we need to let the engine computer energize this relay itself during normal operation. And what that's going to do is it's going to prove all of the relevant inputs regarding you know system pressure, evaporator temperature, all of that good stuff is good. And the engine computer is in fact trying to turn this relay on, and it is in fact trying to turn that clutch on. So I'm just gonna start the car back up and I'm gonna turn the AC on. So got it running. Got the blower going. So really the engine computer should be energizing this AC compressor clutch relay at this time in an attempt to turn that, uh, turn that AC compressor on. So I just got my test light, it's going to, uh, going to ground. I'm gonna test that over here on the battery, see if it lights. You can see it does. So I'm just touching that fuse. As we can see, the test light is lit. So this engine computer is absolutely attempting to turn this AC compressor on. And we know wiring integrity is good because we used our Noid light down there. No issue with the ground, no issue with the feed. So again, it needs an AC compressor. Uh, based off of our gauge readings, based off of the performance of this AC system. One thing I could do is, I'm going to see if I can just uh, sort of rest my, rest my test light on this fuse terminal here. A little bit easier said than done. There we go. So as you can see, the test light's lit. All I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn, uh, turn the AC off in the car. So that's AC off. As we can see, it turns the test light on, off. Turning that back on. We see the test light comes back on. I think I have a little bit of a connection issue here. There we go. So the control's there, guys. Wiring integrity to the compressor is good. It needs a compressor. That's all there is to it. I just, uh, I just more wanted to sort of show you that and show you that you know this engine computer is, under normal conditions, attempting to turn this compressor on because that's definitely a variable that you know, you're going to need to consider when you're doing testing like this. But uh, based off of what we see here, all relevant inputs are good. Our wiring integrity is good. This compressor, bad. So at this point, we know what's wrong with this thing. It needs a compressor. I also found a few leaks on the car. So what I'm going to need to do is see if I can get these leaks fixed. And obviously I need to get a compressor in this thing. Um, after I've done all of that, definitely not filming that because that's going to be a long, drawn-out process. Uh, we'll come back, we'll revisit the uh, pressures, see how they look, and then uh, we'll also revisit the vent temperature reading that we took earlier. And you know that'll be a good before and after sort of deal for you. There it is, guys. Brand new AC compressor installed. 
and I've already recharged this system back up. Looks like we're right around 65 or so on the low side, about the same on the high side. So uh, really what we're going to do is we're just going to start it up. We're going to take a look at our gauges and then we're going to do a quick vent temp measurement and that's going to uh, confirm the fix. We've got a nice close shot of the gauges. All I'm going to do at this point is just start the vehicle up and uh, go ahead and turn the AC on. Just hopping inside the car now, cranking it up. AC is on full blast. So a pretty big change from uh, what we had before. As you can see, our low side pressure is hanging around, uh, hanging around 20. A little bit of fluctuation there. And then looking at our high side pressure, just shy of 150. So based off of these numbers, we know that our AC clutch is engaged. We know that our compressor is pumping. So uh, let's go redo our vent temperature measurement now that we uh, have this good differential of pressure in the system. Back inside the car now. Got the AC on. It's on a pretty low, uh, pretty low fan speed just for noise purposes. But we'll take another look at my meter. I just have a Type K thermocouple and it's going right into the center vent. Uh, this isn't the best way to check vent temperatures. Uh, the best way is to actually use some sort of dial thermometer. And uh, I can't find mine. So <laughs> we're opting to use this. But uh, remember our before, you know, really we were blowing out ambient air. Uh, I believe it was around 90 degrees before after a pretty good hot soak. Seeing that this is now saying 45 degrees, um, I'm pretty sure that you can tell. Definitely a huge difference here. I'm going to hold the engine RPM up a little bit and we'll see if uh, we'll see if this number reacts. Again, using a uh, thermocouple like this, definitely not the best way to uh, take measurements like this. It's, this is more just for perspective purposes for you guys, just so you can see the, uh, see the change, the before and after, uh, you know, compared to what we had before. So that's pretty much it. That's all she wrote on this one, guys. 2014 Ford Fusion, uh, no AC. Uh, kind of interesting. We saw a different, you know, a few different issues with this system. You know, during the initial, during the initial inspection, we found that it was uh, low on refrigerant, and uh, you know, after we recharged it, that's when we kind of saw this uh, compressor issue. Um, what I can say is that tends to be my preferred method of doing AC system diagnosis, especially on a vehicle that comes in with low refrigerant. Um, oftentimes what I like to do after I do a sort of visual inspection for leaks, I like to put a quick charge in it just to make sure we don't have any other issues. And uh, that kind of saved us on this. Um, if you're working on a, you know, a different vehicle and a customer came in, similar complaint, and you just sold them an AC service, you, know, you might get bit a little bit by this. Um, it's definitely going to result in a phone call back you know, with the dreaded, hey, we got another problem. Your compressor needs to be replaced. So that's kind of why I like to do it the way I do. But a uh, pretty easy issue. Hopefully I cleared some stuff up on some pretty basic AC system testing uh, using the scan tool to uh, identify a undercharged condition using the gauges to do the same thing. Uh, a few quick voltage checks on this AC compressor clutch. So nothing too difficult, but a lot of good info for sure. So thanks so much for sticking around with me. Thanks so much for uh, your interest in my channel and uh, I'll catch you next time.